Hi, it's TV repair time. Um, this one's actually my home unit. This is my Sony uh, 60 inch 4K TV. And unfortunately, um, the headphones don't work. Well, the headphones work fine, but the headphone jack doesn't because um, <laughs> Mrs. E Vlog actually tr uh, tripped over the lead, and of course it's my fault for leaving the headphones plugged in, you know. Anyway, she tripped it over and it pulled out the, uh, it, it sort of like bent and ripped out the lead from the back of the TV. And since that time, the, uh, the headphone jack in the back of it has just been really dicky. It was only coming out of one channel and it was like, like a fixed, like, uni volume. It was just like... It, <laughs> I don't know, it, like the volume control didn't work, it was hopeless. Anyway, so it finally failed, so I'm going to take this thing apart in situ and uh, try and have a look at replacing that socket. Now unfortunately, um, because it's got one of these stands, it's not like I can just sort of lift this thing off and then just lay it down on the floor. I'm going to take the stand off, so um, I won't lay it down on the floor, obviously. I'll just leave it, uh, probably just flip it around leave it um, upright like that and just take off the back panel in situ in an upright. That's usually the way you do it anyway, so don't know why you do anything else. Anyway, let's go. That's the model number for those playing along at home. Yeah, it's like bottom of the range jobby. One little annoying rant is these sound bars. This is a Yamaha, I think it's a Yas 101 or something. Anyway, like why wouldn't you put like a headphone output on there like just whack it on the front panel somewhere I, it's just stupid anyway let's go i think the back panel can actually come off without getting these feet yep the uh the feet are actually attached into the metal chassis there so i think we're good there so let's go this thing didn't want to start straight away don't know what's wrong with it I can see where that little light comes in handy. The really deep recesses in there, hard to see, so beauty. Actually, there's almost as if there's like a split around here just for the back panel PCB. Almost. Does that come out on its own? That'd be damn well nice, wouldn't it? I doubt it though. Nah. She's all integrated. Mwah. I think we're good to go. Missed one. And another one. Sneaky little bugger. Holding on the connectors. There's a pesky uh, legacy RCA jobs. I think we've got those bloody clips. Aha! Two more pesky bastards. Recessed right under the bottom. Uh, need a different screwdriver for that. And you always find some residual plastic from the original <laughs> packaging. <laughs> it's... It was right around the front of the stand. There you go. <laughs> Dull. Alright. Now we're talking. Starting to give. I think it comes from the bottom first. Yeah, real tricky business. This might actually be easier if it was actually flat. There might be a couple of more clips or something. Yeah, there's bloody clips on here. Why bother? If you've got all these screws, I don't... Don't understand why you'd bother. Really don't understand it. Surely you can engineer this damn thing to not need the plastic clips. Surely. Aha! I think that was the last clip. Was it? Yep. Damn. <laughs> that's... That's a... That's really annoying. That's really annoying. Okay, I can see it. We're in. Just got to feed that through. Oh damn, okay. There's a speaker connector. We should have taken that off from the outside. We could have. Could have, should have. Now I can't reach in there with both hands. So I've got to undo it with one hand. Oh, oh, I got it. And we're in like Flynn. Beauty. And yeah, for those of you who want to see the back of it, there you go. Just got the speakers down in there. Nothing fancy pantsy, just very typical for these types of speakers. They come down the bottom. They do actually have a setting in the software for whether or not you want them wall mounted or uh, stand 
mounted like this and it does make a hell of a difference let me tell you anyway that was the pesky connector in there but they did think about this and it is accessible when you take off the uh that mains input cover so you can actually get it and disconnect that so yeah i obviously should have done that anyway there you go for all you speaker aficionados i got into a lot of trouble to mount that very typical flat screen construction we've got our mains switch mode supply in there there it is and uh of course you don't need uh, the fancy cfl uh backlighting because these are all lead backlighting these days but uh Ooh, look at those gold caps down there. Whoa. Whoa. Anyway, yep, got that. But we've got our T-Con board down in there, which, which is the interface to, from your processor to your uh, flat panel. They've got their own, you know, failures. You can buy spare T-Con boards. And then main processor board over here, just one big heat sink. <laughs> That's it. But then, of course, there's multiple devices under there sharing the same uh, heat sink. So... That's our problem. And for you Wi-Fi aficionados, that's the Wi-Fi board inside this thing. And the tuner aficionados, geez, there's not much in the tuners these days, is there? Wow, that's even on its own separate board. Look at that, little right angle. Um, I really like that. There's our culprit. Yep, I can, yep, wiggle, 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 yeah. They ain't supposed to wiggle like that. <laughs> So it's just been like completely, well, it's, the joints are still, I'm sure the joints are still fine, but um, the, you know, because they can handle a lot of, a fair amount of mechanical force, but uh, yeah, like uh, but probably all the internal contacts and everything is just, yeah, it's cactus. Ooh, that's a ceramic heat sink, not an aluminium rubbish. Don't actually know what brand electrolytics those are. Anyone know? I have to look up the part number because I don't want to, they're stuck down, so I don't want to rip them up. But yeah, there's the rest of the board. And requisite input fuse, X and Y caps. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Ah, oh, it's just Bobby Dazzler. Look at those. Look at that common mode chokes. Just fantastic. And a custom tranny up there. Our drivers, heat sinks can see all of our and you can see the uh, the isolation you can notice all the cross hatch in there so this is all primary side this is all secondary side stuff we've got our optos opto isolators and our DC output filter caps I can't actually read those filter caps and as suspected yep those uh, solder joints look just fine so it's like the actual connector the internals of the connector have just been physically abused and broken or whatnot okay i was wondering what on earth this thing is it looked like a weird ass package and then i looked of course at the location of it because <laughs> it's a dead giveaway and it's l so l might be a giveaway l is inductor of course and it's a surface mount the ethernet uh, transformer sorry so uh, isolation transformer isn't it i don't think i've seen one of those that is that is really quite neat actually i think we're in luck look at that the top of that is broken the outside pin so is that ground i believe that's ground so, um, I, it looks like the others are intact. So, I, I, maybe it's just that outer connector. I can re-solder that. And Bob's your uncle. Perfect job for the portable TS-80 soldering iron. Beauty. Problem with those right angle ones is that they're really ugly to get in there and um, <laughs> make look like neat and tidy. Mm. Anyway, it's stuck. You can see that that's actually the ground pin there. So, yep, <laughs> that'd do it. Nope, only the one channel. So it looks like that other pin further back is buggered as well. But you can't access that from the outside with the iron. I've tried to heat it up from the bottom, but it doesn't do anything. But the volume works now. And yep, if I put pressure on that connector, both channels. No amount of wiggling does it. But you got it. There we go, got it. <laughs> but... Yeah, broken pin at the back. Bummer. Now, I might be able to heat up that pin from the bottom and feed the solder in from the side. Unfortunately, I've only got this one millimeter thick uh, solder. I should carry both types in my kit. 
let that be a lesson to you. Um, but I can sort of just flatten it out and then it'll go under, hopefully. So that might, that might work. Beauty. Here we go. There we go, that melted. Beauty, I think we might have got it. Bugger, that definitely flowed, that reflowed. Okay, I think you can see there that that really hasn't taken as much as I thought it had. And if you have a look at the back side there, you can see that seems to be, oh yeah. Yeah, that seems to be the connection for the center tap. Sorry, it's hard to get right in there. Uh, but you can see that it goes, I think it goes up there and then folds back and in and that's what contacts the, uh, the tip of that. So yeah, I reckon I can maybe, I could possibly uh, even try and reheat it again or We'll just scrape off the side of that plastic down there and uh, have a go at that. Then I'll get easy access to it. I mean, that's a worth a shot. And there you go. You can see, once you get that plastic away, you can see that, yeah, that's completely broken off there. So I should be able to easily join that back now. No worries. Put either just some direct solder in there or maybe even a bit of tin copper wire or something. Be strong as a Mally's bull. All right, that might look a bit ugly, but uh, yeah, that's strong as. I think that'll do the trick. Plug in some headphones, measure one channel, 16 ohms, and the other channel. Ha <laughs> ha, winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> that'll work a treat. I can go plug that in now. I'm confident that's going to work. And I gave it a bit of wiggle, 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 yeah, in there. And oh, look at that. <laughs> Comes off. Oops. Oh, isn't that nice? Look at that. Oh, that's a Bobby Dazzler. Fantastic. These are actually really nice quality headphones, by the way, or earbuds or whatever. I hate the ones that seal. The ones that seal just annoy the crap out of me. These are actually very nice. Check out these. These are sex on a stick. They're um, all glamour or something like that. Anyway, look at that. It's like one uh, die cast piece, one die cast alloy piece. Just, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Love these things. They're very nice. They sound good too. Yeah, but I don't like the ones that seal. I like the ones that just sit in my ear. Oh, I don't know how anyone can stand the ones that seal. Unbelievable. Anyway, very nice. So I'll take that home and uh, fit that back in. I think that's a winner winner chicken dinner. It's a bit ugly. A bit of flux on there. Nah, she'll be right. Right, so if you go into DigiKey and do a search for this connector, um, we want uh, connectors, internet connects, we want barrel audio connectors. Sometimes it's difficult, you know, you might have put 3.5 millimeter phone jack or something like that, and you might have a hard time finding these sort of things. You've got to know where to look. Anyway, barrel audio connectors, and I've drilled down to these, and we've got through hole only, because these are through hole versions, and if we go look at the um, images for all these, I need a pin down in that bottom left corner there, not like up the top. And if you go through, I've looked through this first page, of course, these ones have diddly squat, that one doesn't uh, match either, and none of them match the one, none on the first page anyway, match the one that I'm looking for, unfortunately. Murphy, every time. So I've just got to go through every single page, because you can't really Drill like uh, two sets of three conductors, nine contacts. I could maybe drill it down based on the number of uh, contacts, perhaps. But yeah, I, I, sometimes it's just quicker. And um, it could be in the wrong category, as I've done a video on, for example. So uh, yeah, it's a good thing. This is where, like, you know, a picture tells a thousand words. So you can just search through these and try and find an equivalent. But um, yeah, no luck so far. Of course, one of the alternatives would be to uh, like get a salvaged um, TV or something like that, a salvaged board, and get one off that. Um, you, know, you could, if you was really desperate, you could potentially try and retrofit in a get, say, a surface mount one, and you could put in little jumper wires. You could glue it down and hack it in and do all sorts of you know nasty stuff like that. It's possible. 
We got diddly squad. Have we only got five? We only got five pages. This is it. Going all the way with LBJ right to the, nah, nah. We're done. Looks like DigiKey doesn't have one of these unless I'm, you know, like obsolete, obsolete. <laughs> unless I'm in like the wrong category somewhere, or you know, like I'm somehow missing it. I'll try a bit further, but this may be an oddball job. Win a win a chicken dinner. How many thumbs up? Double. No, triple. You've only got two thumbs. <laughs> Add toys onto that. We fixed it, say again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was just a bad contact, wasn't it? Yes. Yep, just a bad contact down on that. Right there. Right there. Mummy yep. broke it. Yep, it's mummy's fault. Mm. Cool. Might want to take this off. Well done, dude. Down. See you next time. Catch you next time. Catch you next time. <laughs> say again, what are you watching? Curiosity show. Curiosity show. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Catch you next time.